Hey, what's up, guys? My name is The Cherno. You know, as time goes on, and I keep hearing myself say The Cherno, I'm like, w what even is that? Welcome back to another Devlog Monday on a Tuesday this week. So we're not doing too bad. Now, last week, I know there were no videos. You guys are probably wondering what I was up to. More like, no one cares. I had a nice time in the snow with my wife, and now we are back into another lockdown here in Melbourne. So fantastic. What I have been working on over the last few days has been prefabs. So prefabs are an interesting topic because Almost no one knows what they are unless they know what they are. I mean, prefab, what a word. So prefab technically stands for prefabricated something, right? I mean, I know, I think the construction industry uses it. It's something that has been used in game engines here and there throughout the last like 20 years or so. Basically what it means is some kind of entity or object that has been pre-configured and is ready to go. The reason why prefabs are important for a game engine is kind of difficult to explain. I think the best way to actually explain it is to think of a blueprint, not like Unreal Engine's like visual scripting blueprint system, but literally a blueprint. You have a blueprint for what an entity in the game should be. And since you have that blueprint, you can now create copies of this easily. So to take this into more of a real world example, let's just say that every time you shoot in your game, you need to spawn some sort of rocket. So what is that rocket entity? I mean, it might be like an entity that physically has a mesh attached to it because it's a rocket. Maybe it's got a particle system on the back, which is kind of shooting that fire out. It obviously has some kind of like script attached to it that gives it some kind of logic potentially. Maybe there are lights on that rocket and certainly one at the back for all of the fire stuff. Maybe that rocket is actually composed of several rockets and it kind of splits off like in the middle of its flying. You know, this is getting kind of exciting. So the point is that it's not just some simple thing we can just spawn out of midair. It has to be like pretty much a scene if you think about it, like a scene of multiple entities and a hierarchy and components and all of this kind of existing data that we then want to just summon at will. And this doesn't just have to be something that we kind of instantiate or activate through our scripts. It can also be something that we use to build up our level. So maybe we have certain objects in our level, like a tree or I don't know, something that we want to have kind of multiple copies of, but we want them to kind of be all linked to that same blueprint. So that if we were to change the blueprint because we want to change a part of that object, then it would update everywhere because it's it's kind of all coming from that, that one place. So hopefully I have you convinced now that prefabs are very important and a very useful feature to have in a game engine. I mean, if you think about it, it's not strictly necessary. Uh, in all of like the kind of demo games that I've made in Hazel so far, uh, I've kind of gotten around this by just writing kind of uh, entity creation code in my C Sharp scripts. So, so like a good example is actually, I might just show an, a nice little example. So if I pop on into this uh, world, which is basically, I mean, if I hit play, you'll see what this is. It's just kind of, uh, looks like a normal game and then whoa, we get all of these blocks just coming out of nowhere. So these are all obviously kind of prefabs that have been instantiated, except they're not. What's actually happening in this example, and remember this is an example of how to do this like without prefabs, is I literally have this like underscore cube in the scene. If we jump to it, it's actually kind of hidden in, inside this thing. And that is my entity that has an actual like cube mesh attached to it. And then what my C Sharp script does during runtime is it finds this entity by its name and then creates like a copy of it, but then changes a bunch of parameters. And that way we still kind of have a normal entity we can set up in our scene as usual, but then when it comes time to accessing that in the C-sharp script, we have all of its components, like the mesh component ready to go, and we can just simply create a new entity in the scene during runtime and then steal all of the stuff from this cube. So that of course is very far from ideal because I mean, yeah, that works in this case. We just have essentially a cube, which is what, like a mesh component and like, I guess a transform, that's it. That's really, really easy to do. And actually what you don't see in this version is the fact that there's like the C Sharp script is also adding like 2D physics components to it, like a rigid body and a box collider. That's also happening through that C Sharp script. Obviously that's a little bit annoying, even though we can programmatically build up an entirely new entity or or series of entities inside that C-sharp script, it's much easier to use the editor for that to be able to actually set up our prefab, which is an entity or, or group of entities that has all of the components set up, everything set up perfectly using the UI, using the actual editor so that we can see what we're doing and then create a prefab out of that 
that we can then instantiate inside our C-sharp scripts or just use inside the engine. So that in essence is what a prefab is and why it's useful. Now let's dive in and take a look. By the way, if you want access to this, you can help support Hazel by going to patreon.com slash the channel. There will be a link in the description below and you'll get access to everything you're seeing here. You can play around with it yourself. And of course you'll be helping to support the development of Hazel. So let's dive into scenes and I'll just load up audio demo. That's like a decent scene. So this scene and the reason I loaded it up is because it's got a whole bunch of entities in the scene hierarchy. And you can see we've also kind of got parented entities here and we're using some and some empty entities here as like a way to just organize the scene a little better. So this lighting uh, entity is actually a good example of where it might be nice to make a prefab. So let's just say I like the lighting environment that we have here. I mean, under here, we've got a directional light with a certain color, and then we've also got a skylight a dynamic skylight, which is what you're seeing here. So there's also a bunch of like point lights in the scene, but I'm not going to worry about them too much. So what I can do is create a prefab out of this lighting entity. So if I go to like a suitable place, such as assets prefabs, I can take this lighting entity and just drag it into the content browser like this. Then I can give it a name such as lighting. And now I have this lighting prefab. If I double click on it, I'll be able to kind of see an outline of what is actually inside that prefab. So if I look over here, I have lighting, I have directional light skylight they actually pop up over here for some reason i actually this is this was not not intentional i wrote this little thing it uses the same kind of scene hierarchy uh panel that is up here basically but in a slightly different way and they happen to just pop up in this properties panel so i'll probably change that because it's a little bit unclear what is what but you can see i can select these entities here and uh kind of look at them uh compared to what i've got kind of in the scene so that is my lighting prefab. Now what I can do is go to like some other scene, such as uh, let's look at uh, test scene. What's test scene? Okay, this scene. So if I go, go into this scene and I wanted that same lighting setup, let's go ahead and actually delete the directional light, the skylight. So we've got no lighting at all. If I go back to my prefabs, I can just drag in that lighting. And you can see that I've got the same kind of lighting that I had in the, in the other scene, but now in this scene. So that's a good example of where it's nice to use prefabs, but obviously this whole kind of setup that I've got here, I don't have to just instantiate it by just kind of dragging it in to the editor and using it as part of a kind of static scene, like the, the scene that I'm actually creating within the editor. I can take that a step further and instantiate it from a C sharp script. I've also got like this other geometry uh, prefab, which is like the geometry little setup from the uh, other kind of audio test uh, demo thing. So you can see that that's also an example of, uh, you know, what we've got here, which is, uh, you know, a bunch of decor, <laughs> which is like these toruses, like this floor, which is actually a separate kind of entity. We've got all of that stuff here. So that's, that's a good example of what we can do with prefabs. Again, really simple to kind of create them. You just drag them here, give them a name and they're an asset, just like anything else in the engine. And you can actually instantiate them. Now, one thing that I have not done yet, which is kind of important. And this is again, a work in progress. There is currently no way to see what a prefab is in your scene. So usually like in Unity, you'd see them as like, you know, having a special icon and they'd be blue uh, and you can double click on it and then it'll kind of edit it in isolation. Nothing like that exists at the moment. And also they're not actually linked to these files anymore. So what happens at the moment, and I think I'll leave this in as an option because that way this acts more like a template, I guess. But if I just drag this in, right? You can see it just kind of makes a copy of everything. And I've got it here in my scene, right? But if I change this actual asset or I edit it somehow, I don't actually think it's possible to edit this unless you actually like open up the file and start changing things manually. Uh, but if I were to edit this as, as I will be able to in the future, then you'll see that like this is not going to update because this stuff kind of, it's it's the same as if I just copied an entity from a different scene and put it into this scene. So under the hood, the way prefabs work is they are essentially a scene. They're a scene because if you think about it, I mean, a prefab is, is a scene, right? Like you've got a series of entities that can have a hierarchy, they don't have to, could just be a whole bunch of entities and they need to be stored in some place. Uh, so that's how they work under the hood. But anyway, the point is there's still a bit of work to do because there needs to be a way to kind of, you know, retain entities as like, um, sorry, retain prefabs as some kind of special type of entity that is actually linked to an asset that if I modify the asset, I can see that because at the moment, as I mentioned, you just drag this into the scene and then they just get created and now they're part of the scene 
and they get serialized as part of the scene as just normal entities as if you had manually created them. So a little bit of work to do, but that is the general kind of gist. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little devlog. Don't forget to hit the like button if you did enjoy it. Let me know what your thoughts are about this. Prefab is pretty standard, um, not too difficult to set up. I probably spent like less than eight hours on this whole kind of system here. To be honest, I think one of those hours was spent on setting up an Illustrator file with that icon that you saw in the content browser panel, because up until now, I haven't actually been making any of the icons myself. That's been uh, done by some people on the Hazel Core team, and I didn't even have like a master kind of file to work from. So now we're going to probably spend some time on the UI in the future and standardize some of these icons and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that was kind of my uh, journey. Now, because I am sitting here in a Discord partner, uh, it's on this side, Discord partner hoodie, uh, it's probably a good idea to mention that I do actually have a Discord. There'll be a link in the description below. Uh, it's like the channel.com slash, oh, actually, no, there's, I think someone made an actual vanity URL now. So it's like Discord dot gg slash the churno. It's a fantastic place for you, no matter what it is you're specifically interested in or working on. So it's a great community where you can get help with like various programming or game engine development topics, as well as just chat about like what games you're currently playing, what you like. It's also a great place to discuss these videos and these devlogs if you don't really want to just leave a comment below and probably never hear from anyone again. So definitely check out my Discord. The link will be in the description as I mentioned, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.